Hey guys, this is going to be the first video in a series where I teach you how to use domino reduction or DR in your solves for FMC. Now in this first video, we're not actually going to look at domino reduction yet. We're going to look at EO, which is usually the first step to achieving domino reduction. For people who use ZZ, you might already know how EO works, but I'm still going to explain how EO works in this video. So first of all, we need to understand what EO actually is. Now when you solve a cube, you usually have to use all six faces to solve the cube, F, B, R, L, U, and D. But if you achieve EO, you achieve a state where the cube can be solved with only R, L, U, D, F2, and B2 moves. So you don't need to do any more F or B moves. In a ZZ context, that means that you don't have to rotate for the entirety of your solve. But for FMC, what it does is it basically just simplifies the cube. And this simplification is really helpful for simplifying the cube even further into domino reduction, which I'll explain in a later video. Now let's look at how to actually do EO. Okay, now that we have the cube scrambled, the first step to achieving EO is the distinction between good edges and bad edges. So a good edge is just an edge that can be placed into its correct position with only U, R, D, and L moves. For example, this yellow red edge here, and because you can solve it with only an R2, it means that it's a good edge. On the other hand, an edge like this, this white orange edge, if you just do a U prime to put it in its correct position, it's flipped. That means that it's a bad edge because you can, because you need to do a B move before you can place it in the correct position. Now it's important to notice that there are always an even number of good edges and bad edges. And also if you do a Y rotation, a good edge from this axis is not necessarily a good edge from this axis. So in this axis, the yellow orange edge can be placed into its correct position with R prime D2. So it's a good edge. But if you look from this axis and you do L D prime, it's flipped. So it's a bad edge on this axis. So basically what that means is you can check EO on three different axes, green or blue front, red or orange front, and white or yellow front. Now I'm going to show you how we generally solve two bad edges, four bad edges, six bad edges, and eight bad edges. Let's go. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to solve EO if you have two bad edges. Two. Okay, so we have this example here, where the two bad edges are this green-red edge and this white-blue edge. The way to solve this is to do an F, which turns this bad edge into a good edge, and these three edges from good to bad. So now we have four bad edges left, which are this yellow-blue edge, this orange-blue, this yellow-green, and this green-red edge from the beginning. And now what you can do is do an L to put all of the edges on the F layer, and then another F. So that's three moves. You could also think of it as sort of like inserting a pair. So it's like inserting this pair to this, I mean, this edge to this location like that. Now let's look at another example. Okay, here we have another example of two bad edges. And the two bad edges are this white green edge and this blue orange edge. We want to follow a similar process to the previous example, but if I do a B here, what that does is these two bad edges become good edges, and these two good edges become bad edges. And that doesn't accomplish anything because you end up from having two bad edges and ending up with two different bad edges. So what you want to do is move one of the edges away. So you can do a U prime like this. Then now if you do a B, these three good edges become bad edges like that. Then you can put this bad edge back here, and now all of these four edges are bad edges. Then you can do another B or B prime, and that solves EO. And now following the same concept, you can you can do a lot of variations of this EO with the same move count. You can do U and then B U prime B prime, or you can do U two. You can even do R prime to move this one away, and then B prime or B. There are just so many variations, and 
in some cases you wanna try as many as you can to find as many continuations. Okay, now let's look at how to solve four bad edges. Okay, here we have a solve on the inverse scramble, and the four bad edges are this red blue edge, this green red edge, this yellow red edge, and this white red edge. When you have four bad edges, the main goal is to move all of the edges to either the F or B layer and then do an F or B. So here you can do it by doing L to move this one in, and then U to move this one in, and R. And now all four edges, all of the four bad edges are on the F layer. And in this case, there's no really other solution to solve it in four moves because if you, for example, if you insert this one first, this edge gets pushed to the back and then it's pretty difficult to put back in here. So yeah, really the only way to solve this particular case in four moves is L, insert this one, L, insert this one, insert this one, and then F. Okay, let's look at another example. Okay, in this case, we're actually solving on the orange front axis. So I'm going to be referring this to as the, as the F face, even though this is the F face. Four bad edges are white, blue, white, green, yellow, red, and orange, blue. There are a lot of ways to solve this in four moves. You can't really solve it in three moves because this edge is trapped by these two bad edges. So one way you could do it is insert this one with a U, and then insert this one here, D, then R, and now all of the bad edges are here. There are also this, there's also this variation where you can do R prime to insert it here instead of here. And then now this one, L prime, U prime, F. Or you could also do R prime, something like F2. So moving this slot here, F2, and then move this one here. There are a lot of ways to solve this. But there's another way to solve this case, which is a concept you can apply to many different EOs, and that is to do an L. So when you have a, we have two bad edges on the F face and two elsewhere, you can do an L, and what that does is turns these two bad edges into good edges in this position, and the two bad edges are here. So or originally the two bad edges are here, and now they're here, and that just it's just another way to solve the EO here. And now, since the two bad edges are here and the two remaining bad edges are here, you can simply insert it with L prime U, and then another L, I mean F, and then EO is solved. Okay, here we have another example for um, four bad edges, and this case is actually pretty easy to see how to solve. The four bad edges are here, 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 and here. So you can just do R to move this one in, and then L, F. So that's pretty simple. But what Wen did in this solve is he did an F prime first, and this is a similar concept to what we did in the previous example by doing random F move. What it does is these two bad edges become good, and then these two become bad. So the position of the bad edges still stay the same, but what you're doing is moving the pieces around and giving you more opportunities to uh, find different um, continuations. In this solve, Wen did F prime, and then still the same EO solution basically, R, L, F prime. Now we're going to be looking at six bad edges. Okay, in this scramble we're looking at red front, and the six bad edges in this case are green red, white green, yellow blue, orange blue, yellow green, and orange green. So when you have six bad edges, the concept is still the same, and that is to reduce it to four bad edges, because then you can put all of them in one face, do another move, and EO is done. And when you have six bad edges, what you want to do is put three bad edges on one face, and in this case, the three bad edges are already here. So yellow, blue, white, um, white green, and green, red. And if you do an R, those three bad edges turn into good edges, and this one becomes bad, and what we're left with is four bad edges. So white, orange, orange, blue, yellow, green, and orange, green. But this case seems pretty complicated. So in this solve, what you can do after the R is switch to the inverse. And this switching to the inverse is a concept is called NIS. If you haven't learned it already, I'm gonna put some links below to JPERMs and 
um, speak your reviews uh, tutorials because they're pretty good. Okay, we've done an R and a normal scramble to reduce the bad edges to only four. And now on the inverse, what we're left with is very easy case. So yellow red, blue white, white green, and yellow orange. And all we have to do is a D prime, and then EO is done. So basically for six bad edges, what you want to do is reduce to four bad edges and then solve from there. And in this case, switching to the inverse actually helped. So that's something you want to look for in solves, which is using this not only for block building, but also during EO. Okay, we, here we have another example of six bad edges. And similarly to the previous scramble, there are three bad edges on this F face, red, blue, green, orange, and um, yellow, blue. And then the other three are here, yellow, orange, white, red, and white, blue. So we could do, you know, the normal F to reduce it to four bad edges. But in this case, we can do something different. And um, what we do here is basically reduce it to two bad edges instead of four. So what we can do is an L prime. And what that does is this bad edge moves here and it becomes four bad edges on the F layer. And if we do an F, we're left with two bad edges here. And we can do B prime, D, B to finish. Again, there's so many ways to solve EO. And this is just another type of EO that you can implement into your solves. Okay, finally, we're going to be looking at eight bad edges. So you can have 10 and 12 bad edges in solves, but generally they're not worth it because it usually takes a lot of, um, a lot of moves to solve. Uh, so yeah, I'm just not gonna look at those in this video. So here we have eight bad edges and four are already on the F layer, green, orange, yellow, green, yellow, blue, and yellow, red. The remaining four are white, blue, green, red, white, green, and um, yellow, orange. So in this first example, the best way to solve it is to do an F first because it solves four bad edges and now we're left with only four bad edges. And those are here. And we're just gonna solve it like usual. Put this one in first and this one, then do a B and EO is solved. So in that first example, what we were doing was basically solve four bad edges and then another four, four bad edges uh, separately. But there's actually a much cooler way to solve eight bad edges, and that is to move all of the bad edges onto the F and B layer, and then do FB to solve EO. So for this scramble, uh, solving four first and then another four separately takes a lot of moves. In this um, method of solving eight bad edges, it's actually pretty difficult to track all of the eight bad edges and then put them onto the F and B layers, right? This is the trick that Wen taught me which is to look at the four good edges instead of the eight bad edges. And then placing the four good edges on the S layer, and that guarantees that all of the bad edges are on the F and B layer. Okay, let's apply that concept into this example. Um, the four good edges are this white blue edge, white orange edge, yellow blue, and, where is it? Yellow red. So, First, we can start by doing an R prime, and now two of the good edges are already on the S layer, and then the other two are these ones, and um, this is not too difficult to see, but it might be uh, when you're just starting out, and the move to do here is B two, and then U. Let's look at that again. R prime to so this one is already on the S layer. R prime to move this to the S layer. B2 to put these um, two edges opposite each other, and then U. And now these four are good edges, and the rest are bad edges. So we can just do FB, and it solves EO. Now, just now we did R prime and then B2. Um, in this case, actually doing B2 first and then R prime doesn't really affect the position of the good edges, so you can also do it in that order, and then U, FB, and it gives you a different EO in the same number of moves. And that's it. That's the cool way to solve eight bad edges. We've looked at a lot of examples on how to solve EO in this video, and the takeaway basically is that there are a lot of ways to solve EO, and the more EOs you check in a solve, the higher the likelihood you would find a good solve because you look at more different continuations. So the general method to solve EO is to 
reduce it to four bad edges and then move them all onto one face then do another F or B move depending on the case and then EO is solved but then there are some special cases where you can reduce it to two bad edges or for eight bad edges you can move all of the bad edges onto the F and B layer and then do F and B yeah that's basically it um, the more solves you do the more patterns you will see on how to solve EO and on the next video we're going to look at how to set up to domino reduction from EO. Bye.